The supraclavicular block is used for surgery below the shoulder. A proper supraclavicular block will effectively block the elbow, forearm, wrist, and hand. The reason we use supraclavicular blocks is because the nerves are located very tightly together and our needle movements can usually get all the brachial plexus with minimal movements of the needle. The supraclavicular block has made a resurgence since using ultrasound. The reason is we are able to visualize some important structures such as the first rib, the subclavian artery, and the pleura. To start a supraclavicular block, it's very important to position the patient properly. The way we position patients for the supraclavicular block is to move the pillow all the way over to the side so our hands have plenty of room to come from the posterior side of the patient. We also turn the patient's head away from the site to be blocked. Then we elevate the head of the bed 30 to 45 degrees and that gives us the ability to have our hands in a comfortable pos position while we do the block. We use a high frequency linear probe for the supraclavicular block. Our nerve should be found a half a centimeter to two centimeters below the skin. I have oriented the probe so the left side of the screen is anterior and the right side of the screen is posterior. In this setting, we now see a bright white stripe going across the screen with a pulsating subclavian artery sitting on this bright white stripe. This stripe can be either first rib or it can be pleura. Your needle tip should never be below this stripe. We call the area below this stripe the no-fly zone. On the screen we now see from left to right the anterior scaling on the left, the pulsating subclavian artery. The most important place to make sure you have local anesthetic is between the pulsating subclavian artery and the first rib. This is because the inferior trunk lies in this area and some people have difficulty with the supraclavicular block because it is ulnar sparing. Usually I do two injections for this supraclavicular block. I put one injection down in the corner between the pulsating artery and the first rib and then I put a second injection up higher by the superior trunk. My needle position for the supraclavicular block comes posterior to anterior and starts about a centimeter away from the probe. If I start a centimeter or more away from the probe, my needle angle will be flat and it will be visualized better on the ultrasound machine. It's very important to have my needle completely in plane with the ultrasound probe so it will be visualized during its entire length. Give some injection of local anesthetic, usually about one to two milliliters, to see the spread of the local anesthetic on the ultrasound screen. Injections below the nerves will push the rest of the brachial plexus more shallow, making the rest of the block easier. I usually inject about 20 to 30 milliliters of local anesthetic in the supraclavicular region. This example of a supraclavicular injection the first injection is lateral to the nerves. Our needle is barely visible because it is at a steep angle. As the needle is flattened out, we will see it better. You can see the pulsating subclavian artery sitting on the first rib, and you can even see pleura out more laterally. As the injection is put into the pocket between the artery and the first rib, notice the artery is even lifted off the first rib during this injection. Now you can see the needle much better because it is at a flat needle angle. You can see the nerve just posterior to the artery and the hypoechoic local anesthetic spreading below the nerves.